Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you a better way for handling events that are generated from Swift UI views. So let's go ahead and take a look at a very simple example. You can see that in this example, we have a content view. And the content view contains a list which is displaying a reminder cell view. Each reminder cell view contains a checkbox, some sort of a label showing the name of the reminder or the title of the reminder, and a delete icon. Now, if we want our reminder cell view to be nice and reusable, we shouldn't be performing any kind of check operation or delete operation right inside the reminder cell view. We should always be exposing different functions using closures so that the parent, which in this case will be the content view, can handle those events and that will make it more reusable. So our technique is something like this. We go ahead and create these closures on checked. We are going to pass in the index of the item. Now index over here is just because that's my data. In your case, it will be an object uh, for reminder, which will have a title and a reminder date and a reminder time and reminder color and so other things. But right now the data that I'm displaying is just an index. So that is what I'm passing over here. All right. But uh, this is a data. I wouldn't even call it index, I guess, but this is just a data that I'm passing. Okay. But it has nothing to do with the index of the array or anything like that. And the other one will be on delete. So I'll create these two different closures and now our reminder cell view is a little bit more reusable because every time the square is checked we can go ahead and say on tab gesture and we can say on checked and pass in the data for the checked so whichever reminder is checked we're going to pass that one and we can do the same thing with the trash can or the delete operation we can simply say delete and pass in the reminder that we are deleting, which is this one. And on over here on the calling side, it's going to make any, uh, it's going to change because now we need to pass in the on checked and on delete closures. So we'll start with on checked. And you can see that we have to implement on checked. We'll get the index. Again, it's more of like a reminder that we are getting. So it's not really the index, but I hopefully you get the idea. And we will get the on delete. So we'll get the data for the reminder that we can use to delete, whichever reminder that we want to delete. And this is a very common operation. This is how we usually build our reminder cell views or any other sub view which is exposing different actions and giving the opportunity to the parent, which in this case is content view, to use those you know, events to perform something, like do something over here. And that is what makes everything, well, reusable. I can go ahead and use reminder cell view in some other view. And when it is checked, I can do something different. When the delete button is clicked, I can do something different. And that is what the reusability comes from. But what if we are doing it a little bit differently, meaning what if we can put these things inside some sort of a structure. So let me go ahead and create a struct. And I will say reminder cell events. And I will say on checked, which will be integer, and on delete, which will be integer. So instead of these two on checked and on delete, now we can go ahead and create just one single variable. We can call it on event. You can call it anything you want. And then it will become reminder cell events and void. So let's go ahead and update our code for the tab gesture. So we'll go with the first one. When you check on a checkbox, well, we can say on event and on checked, passing in the whatever item is checked. Nice and simple. Same thing over here on event. It will be on delete, passing in the data or item that you're deleting. 
So now you can see that instead of having previously we had like two different closures, we only have one closure. And if you had some other events that is going on, like maybe on checked is one, on delete is one, maybe you want to do on select or on something else, then you can just add it over here instead of adding like three or four or five different closures. The calling side is going to definitely change. So now we can simply say reminder cell view, passing in the index. And you can see that now we don't really have multiple closures. We only have one. We will get the event. And now we can perform a switch on the event because it's an enum. If we get the on checked, we will get the whatever. And we can do something. It doesn't really matter what we do over here, I guess. And on delete, we can do the same thing. Much nicer and easier to follow. And we will in the end end up with less code because as the complexity of your reminder cell view, uh, it, it will become more complex and it exposes more functionality, then you can simply add more behaviors over here, meaning different actions or events, instead of adding it multiple times in the reminder cell view with three or four different closures. The calling side is also very simple now. Instead of handling the on checked and on delete closures, we're just handling the on event closure and everything works as expected. All right, so try to use this technique and see if it works in your favor. Thank you. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. You can see I have a lot of different courses on iOS development, including the Swift UI declarative interface course, which is 26.5 hours long. If you are interested in augmented reality, then check out my course on Reality Kit. I also have a brand new course on UI Kit, which is completely programmatic, so no storyboards. So definitely check that one out. Also RX Swift as well as Core Data. A lot of courses available for you, and even MVVM design pattern in UI Kit. So definitely check out these courses, uh, and thank you so much.